politics, no immoral. Um, Sorry about that. I was, uh, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> I oh. seem to do that almost every single time. So thank you, Jordan, for reminding me. And I apologize for interrupting. Dion, please continue. That's fine. It's good. I wasn't reading a poem, so that's all good. All right. So like I said, my this is about my dad, a political activist. Liberal father. He sits in thinned Hanes reading The New Republic, one leg crossed over the other, picking at a flaked green toenail, some rot caught in the steaming air during amphibious assault on Guadalcanal. On weekends under wraiths of blue smoke, he visits with his buddies, men in striped bell bottoms and afros, women with long noses and gypsy earrings, French professors from the university organizing for the first farm worker for Congress, the first black man for president, the next Kennedy. At five, he rises like a machine, feeds the mastiffs, leaves to teach high school, his civic students invading the city council, printing t-shirts in the garage, storming a precinct in Watsonville, registering voters around the vinegar plant, the lined up shanties by the cabbage field. He fortifies the teachers union with longshoremen, brings in the NAACP to meet the environmentalist. You gotta get them talking, he tells me, like Tip and the Gipper, everyone lifted up except my sister and me, when, together with my mother, he sets upon us with whip and belt, their cheeks as they beat us, red as bruises, eyes glazed like they're having sex. Until I turn nine, his fists suspended over me, I stand in front of the dead fireplace, a piece of sharp kindling in my hand, prepared to kill them both. Doreen, he says, I'm not doing this shit anymore. So she beats us herself while he stays out till midnight attending meetings at the League of Women Voters. There's another one about my father. Um, that first one, those first two that I read, um, if this is recorded, you only heard the second one. Um, those are both from Ghost Dogs. This one will probably be in my next book, which is coming out in two years from Cornerstone Press. Um, and it's called My Father's Death Room. Gone the old ogre jaw, the wide churn of brow, his face smooth, petal-like, helpless as a newborn. I straighten the fallen head, wipe a trace of leprous spittle from his cheek. My mother hoots, the dead don't need straightening, yanks the pillow so his teeth smash the cot's metal bars. Then she rips the sheet from under him like some kind of professional. He pops and seizes as if taken by a devil. She shoves my shoulder out the door, flips the switch like a whip, but I stay stare at the dark. My father loved me, but he failed at loving me. I want to feel him finally as he escapes. And for a moment, there he is, a gluey thickness, a fermented tang in the air. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, I'm going to read one more intense one, then we'll get, then we'll lighten up, a, we'll lighten up a bit. Um, when I was, um, this one's going to be in Sadness of the Apex Predator, my next book. Um, when I was 19, I was in a house fire and um, I burned most of my skin off and there were some interesting, beyond just like the intensity of being burned, there was just some interesting events that came up that were related to being burned. And, and this is one of them um, with my sister. Big sister, let's say she kept her promise, lifted me from the tub. Let's say she watched Bonanza and waited as I scrubbed my sores, ran a flannel over my wasted thighs, the warts and moles, blemishes and fat flamed away by fire. Let's pretend she said, 
I'm sorry when she dropped me, slammed my head on the porcelain ridge, a deep ring beginning in my ears. I would have understood. It's difficult, even for a grown woman, to carry a wet, burned girl. Let's say she tried again, and this time managed my slippery body, toweled my florid scars, rib ridges, and vertebrae, threaded my arms through the sleeves of a robe, helped me to the couch, talked to me, said she'd visit tomorrow because my friends didn't know what to do with me. I couldn't take my skin to the beach, couldn't feel my life beginning. Let's say as I lay in the tub, dazed, she didn't scream, look at you, I can't stand it. Didn't slam the door, leave me there alone. Floor it up the driveway in her beat up rambler. Let's say she wanted to lift me up, but no one taught her how. Let's say that. Okay, this next poem is also gonna be in, in Sanus of the Apex Predator. Um, and it was about this unbelievably wild boyfriend I had in high school. <laughs> this is for you, Bibi. Mid-century. Then a boy kissed me. I loved how he'd leap a fence, disappear, then drop from a tree with stolen art. Blues LPs I'd never heard of, Percy Mayfield, Johnny Otis a sound that proved suffering stayed after suffering ended. I loved the theft, coffee table books, soapstone statuettes, small flutes of whittled wood. I loved the way he wouldn't change and the way I did because of what he gave me. Yes, I loved his skin when it vanished into greenery, returned with the smell of acacia and salt. I loved how he trembled like a small box of music. Open your hand, he'd say, I have a gift. Okay. Okay, this one has got a long title, um, but it's one of my favorite titles that I've ever written. Springtime. The dog jumps on the bed and bites you as we fuck and I feel young again. That's the title. Sometimes I prayed, Jesus, let me sin again. I couldn't help it. Look at the iconography of my tribe. Long hairs nailed up like rock stars, saints starving like haute models, half naked, full of arrows. The royal blue beauty of the crying mother, her arms crossed over a bleeding heart. Like the single mom, I once was bored of my kids, tired of staring at the slide, waiting for an accident. An eye watched me all day as I bathed the filthy, added cheese to dimpled wafers. Night bulged darker than water. But today, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna give Dion a minute to control her her menagerie over there. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. Um, this is moments like this that I uh, I don't miss my dogs who also used to be unruly. All right, welcome back, Dion. I used to, okay, I'm just gonna see. Uh, 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 let's see, okay, here. But today the house is quiet. Just you and the meddlesome dog whining like an archangel, kick her off, lock her out. She can pester the door. Babe, let's start over. I'll pull you in, my old body dry as a copperhead. Let's fight with pitted eyes and razor spurs, then sleep into each other until we're grafted apple trees, the softness of our petals becoming wind. Okay. I just got one short one left. Um, let me just do this last one, then we're through. 
we'll see if the dog and the bird will let me get through this. <laughs> How to dress wounds. Insist on entering cathedrals, the window colors sliding through flesh. Feel them clockless, the centuries laboring toward God filling you like breath. Remember what happens, happens slowly. Listen to something small as a butterfly shivering the back of your skull. Look at your unmanageable body as the plant sees the sun. Complete devotion. Day after day, drag yourself to the same altar. Drink and eat as best you can. Forgive the imperfections on the skin of fruits, the unblessed meat. Awaken to light moving through curtains. Sleep the way horses canter through dark trees, riderless until they forget their horses. Okay, I'm just going to try to take my own advice on that one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dion. That was just wonderful. What a powerful series of poems. I hope everybody runs out and buys your book immediately. <laughs> ghost dogs. <laughs> yeah, ghost dogs. All right. Oh, where'd you go? Sorry. Okay. So next up, we have Jordan Franklin. I'm very excited to introduce her. Um, Jordan is a poet from Brooklyn, New York. She earned her MFA from Stony Brook, Stony Brook, Southampton. Her work has appeared in the Southampton Review, Breadcrumbs, Easy Paradise, Tinderbox Poetry Journal, Frontier, and elsewhere. She's the winner of the 2017 James Hurst Poetry Prize and the 2020 Gatewood Prize as well as being a finalist for the 2019 Furious Flower Poetry Prize. Her first poetry collection, When the Signals Come Home, was published by Switchback Books in March of 2021. Her first poetry chapbook, Boys in the Electric Age, was published by Folsom Books in August of 2021. So, let's see, Jordan, I'm gonna unmute you. And uh, I'm excited to hear your poems, thank you. Madison, Madison, radio, 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 stop. <laughs> In my head, buzzing, ripping across the surface, the synapse, the wires, gray gears churning, charting out noise, oh, those sounds, voices, static, quiet, static. Hip hop, not just a little Bach quartet, a third, no fourth movement. Mine's like a Rorschach test. The pitter patter of fine nonsense above the eyelids and below the matted crown. Flicker on, go the lights. One, two, three, four, louder. Perfection. Chris clear stations fluttering. Bang, 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 buck. I am a radio on all stations, on at all times of day, never ending, never off. No quiet inside. Must never. Be quiet, static, quiet, static. Silence, batteries expired. So, hi, um, yep, my name is Jordan E. Franklin. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, it means a lot. And also I wanna give a big shout out to Dion. I really loved your poems, you know, and also I'm glad you start off with the dad poems. I got dad poems too, <laughs> so. And also, I want to give a big shout out to Nicole and the Kearns clan, as well as um, Rebecca Woman. Hey, so um, first things first, I'm going to read from my poetry collection. 
um when the signals come home i'm gonna do two poems from the chat book boys in electric age and I'm gonna go right back to this collection so like i said this whole collection is about my ill father my dad was my dad had diabetes and he had a fall and as a result of it he became um a paraplegic so um this next poem is called inheritance to rack and tore tongue solar flare temper mom's cheekbones pops weak eyes to knuckle busted hands arachnid fingers bible names terracotta curves the plantations taken vows broken a potential future green legged and stalling until the surgeon saw to musical ears a fine reed of mouth solitary mothers separations restraining orders the holes grandfather shaped and fathers who fantasized absence plastic spoons tall folks to soldiers sailors in violent jungles roseless spring days nights above melodic crack file crunches to bed sty gunshots beyond school fences grandmother midwives ellis island to Atlantic graveyard, blackened sea floor, bad hearts, troubled brains, to titles, never ending christenings, mistakes both breathing and not, to accepting blame, love under gaslight, child shaped collateral, juvenile bullseye, to never ending right, a daughter, a poem. Thank you. So, ah, so this next one is called Map of Maladies. And um, the last decade or so, not only did I have to contend with my father falling ill, I also, my mom is a cancer. So basically, Map of Maladies refers to not only my dad being sick, but also to my mom. So, there you go. 2011. Kidney stones, a two inch tubes planted in mom. It's bleeding can wait for my hands and gauze to trap the red. She can wait on her side, voice fogged in unease. Me a step below tears as I work. I can wait under the loneliness of our bathroom light to rinse her blood off my fingers. Grief can wait for another year when the living room gives way to her news of cancer. Tears can wait over her body, heavy with new tubes, smeared in anesthesia and pain. The cancer can wait until chemotherapy wipes everything clean. I count her hair's loss to the tub's drain. She can wait to shave the rest as realization drags itself under the light. Beautiful. The word can wait on my tongue until she returns to life before me again. I can wait for the fast forward to 2014. Dad's now wheelchair bound, diabetic. We can wait for his bed sores, surgeries, hospitals circulating him between them like clots in his blood. He can wait until 2015 for the hopelessness, for his J, baby, let me go. Heaven is a broken vein and it can't wait. Thank you. As you can see, I like I have this bad habit of putting like post-its everywhere. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna read that and read that. I have a very weird system. I like putting post-its in books. I don't like writing in them, I like putting post-its in books. So um this one, next one's called Waiting for Dinner at Warren Street. Um, Warren, she was like my first home, basically. And after my parents, you know, broke up, every other weekend we go to Warren Street with my with my dad. So waiting for dinner at Warren Street. Dad's in the kitchen singing into a spoon's head. In a boom box are the Mary Jane girls stacked above the stove's heat. Brooklyn outside the window in a night that redacts the sun. 
The bridge, green lit and dressed to the nines in stars, straddles the horizon. There are many pictures like this in my head of a man and his warm, man and his music held in the warm orange eye of our brownstone. Dad sings over dinner plates, his triumphant cry as the station switches to slave, then prince. This is the dad I'm not sure I've ever had. These pictures, their frames cracked like a radio that can still serenade me once a day. All right. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna transition to my chapbook for a bit and go back to the collection. And um, for those of you who don't know, I started out as a slam poet when I was a teenager. And then like I shifted, I still do performance poetry every now and then, but like I mostly prefer I don't know, it's, it's, I can't describe it. I started as a slam poet. I still perform here and there. And a lot of times when I do readings, I like to transition from both poems for the page and poems for the stage. So this next one is in my chat book, Boys in Electric Age. And it's called Multiverse of Madness in Technicolor. Never been a pink girl, Sherlock. I gray aced all your tests. Broke your Richters and Kinsey's was so ultraviolet. I shattered your spectrums with my plectrum lips. I challenged Khan with purple pens set the stun, made Dormammu's dark knees ride like fault lines when I roared. I pulled a Patrick Melrose and traded maternal instincts for an imagination that ran naked and green through the flat bush of my skull on the blackest imagined the pop fingers of Dr. Strange and Wong. Bolder than love, I bum rush Crayola out its box. If you ever want to catch the colors of a universe in your hands, baby, hold me. Thank you. Um, so, a lot of my poems are inspired by music and um i don't know it, it i don't remember right listening to music sometimes helps me write or even like if i'm trying to revise a poem i find listening to the same song over and over again gets me in the right tone to revise so this next one is called winter in america in america and it's for gil scott heron I raise the dust from your disc and praise how it cools my palms. Your offering ready to engorge speakers, this tomb of worn voice, savored, spun, repeated. On this disc, you are not a junkie or a warning label, but immortal. Heron is just heroin without the eye and this vowel draws poison like a syringe. Bluesologist with those blue notes in black veins, you a man in pieces rasp. Here is my flesh, unto you my bottled blood, this devil at my door. Almost done. Sorry. Almost done. So back to dad poems, depressing poems, and um I'm gonna give you a trigger warning. These next few poems, they reference um, alcoholism, domestic violence, and child abuse. So, um, like I said, I write a lot of poems in response to music, and this next one's in response to like, Swimming Pools Drank by Kendrick Lamar. So this one's called Dive. Backstrokes for Carolina, where your old man broke bloodlines with shaking toe. Carolina, where his daddy drowned since, ruled home with knuckles and gun who made him practice kissing with a cooling barrel whom your dad escaped in jungles with army knife and rebel smoke gramps with his whiskeyed noose swings in a chromosome when alcohol lurks in a room you close your throat for gramps is in a cell somewhere always thirsty so Thanks. And like I said, poems, alcoholism, domestic violence, child abuse. And um, this next one was inspired by this prompt by from Tina Chang. Um, she's not a poet laureate of Brooklyn, if you all don't know her. And so for this prompt, we had to write a poem from the perspective of someone we dislike. So I picked my paternal grandfather because 
I never met him, but I heard a lot of very horrific stories about him. And so I wrote this poem, Grandpa's poem. And also heads up, I use the N word in it also, slurs. I use a slur here and there. And but yeah, I don't stand by those slurs. I'm just in the character, sorry. So Grandpa's poem. Baby, I'm cack as they come. Blood hotter than a sunrise or hot sauce on catfish. Been cack since my granddaddy and his folks took back that plantation, knuckle by knuckle. And I tell that story whenever whiskey threatened my lips or I hear that old forehead scar of mine sing his love song for the rock that cracker drove into it. I never wanted to be a father. I prayed and prayed, but your grandma pushed out four boys. I took one look at them little black mugs and knew I had to beat men into them. As for your granny, she was all right. Too much lip though. A nurse in her suit that ran so white against the blues and yellows, I sang into her bones. <laughs> and your daddy, big mouth like his mama. Big enough to holster my gun into that night. Told your granny I was a backdoor man. And why this corn suck for boy think he could talk like a man? I wish I could say I learned to keep my hands clean as a father, but I've never been one for lying. The bottle made me dance as well as sing. I danced all over my house, worked my hands and feet to every surface I touched. I've always been an entertainer. Could send that one-eyed Sammy Davis nigga packing with his rats and get your grandma ups and leaves me. I want to tell you the distance was enough to stop me. But whiskey got a kick like a drum and even when old cancer took my tongue from my nap, I still sing and sing and sing. Sorry, I, I, I do that sometimes. I am socially I I'm sorry I'm socially awkward off the wazoo it's funny because like you can't like I love performing poetry and like I'm comfortable doing it but like the banter is terrible but this poem um so one of my favorite poets of like all time is Jeffrey McDaniel like and so he has this poem called the um the Benjamin Franklin monogamy as a poem like I really grew to love through my mom because my mom said one time she never really got into poetry until she read that poem. I was like, oh, this is what poetry can be. Cause like, it's so conversational and like, you know what, using like, like different like pop culture references, which I kind of do too. So this poem is called the Nikola Tesla of compulsion and it's after Jeffrey McDaniel. And I do swear once or twice in this poem, but yeah. <laughs> So you can't write poems. Some days dad admits you're his kid to strangers. Some days you believe if you think hard enough about him, he will stride out of an ear and onto his own two feet again. Some days you are the apple of his eye, sweet but defective. Some days you eat raspberries to keep the taste of these words off your tongue. You can't write poems about some days you forget his hands don't work. Some days you're almost worth something. Some days you envy your brothers for stepping out of his life. Some days his words flit on repeat in your head. I would have been a doctor if it wasn't for you. I tried not to be my father and I failed. You can't write poems about mom. Some days you remember his hugs, the warmth of his hands. Some days you regret becoming a poet. Some days you don't want to waste prayers on him. Some days not to speak of him is to drown your larynx in raspberries. You can't write poems about mom because some days he'll wish you were his son. Some days he'll wish he left. Some days he'll take you to the gardens, other days to the auto shows. Some days you're his favorite and he'll tell you so. Some days he'll say, fuck your brothers. Some days you're used to his threats. You can't write poems about mom because she, some days he'll ask you for a gun. 
Some days you realize he was dead long before you entered the world. Some days writing helps. Some days there's a grave between syllables. Some days if you turn your headphones up enough, you can breathe past the raspberries in your mouth. You can't write poems about mom because she loves. Some days he laughs and the world brightens. Some days he's not dad on the phone. Some days you have to plan a plan where his hands come for your brothers again. Some days second person isn't confession. You can't write poems about mom because she loves you. Some days you feel like you're the Nikola Tesla of compulsion as if, the, if you're designed yourself to coil and convulse every time you dare to write or speak ill of dad. Some days the raspberries are fresh. All right, this, this is the last poem. I don't know if I memorized this poem. I normally got it, but I'm afraid of messing it up. So I'm just gonna read it off the page and just try to read in an exciting man manner. But I, I wanna thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening. And um, that's about it. I'm sorry, my banter game is terrible. I told you all that. So this poem is inspired by David Bowie. Like, honestly, the book is kind of, the book's form is kind of inspired by that David Bowie song, The Man Who Sold the World. In the sense that like a, two sections of the book are in first person, but the last two are like in second person. And so as you know, in that song, Man of Soul of the World, he's basically talking to an older self and like trying to make peace with that older self. So, like, I don't know, like that song just inspired me. So this poem is called Sometime in January and it's after David Bowie. After the subway's keens rumble unbroken in cement, you will find sweetbreads, the curry of goats, chickens. Use every inch of the meat and eat them greens. The art of eating like speaking and reading didactic as kid after kid is pushed out of school. Electric running, humming through everything. Puff adder fluorescence and everything glows or at least begs to glow and ponga la luz, mom hisses. The vigils with rattling cups sometimes. This city has so many languages, schizophrenic she is. Your neighborhood's like a little Caribbean except of less sun and juice ain't a buck no more. Not like in my day. In my day, the can was law. Keep from the ledge, they drive for blood on the street. Some limp for green, a house of blankets and cardboard to hold doors when banks close and don't miss the bus. Not even the ones with every kid and their mama bursting through doors. Newborn kittens and their parents run through yards and under cars. And you know the old wives' tale where they steal your breaths as you sleep? Generation is fearing feline. Our post office is the reason folks hate the government sometimes. Yo, hurry your ass up. Never booked quest or spotted the star man. Remember every face. Remember the thousand yards there it takes commuters sometimes. And salmon fillets in the market to butter and bake. And take that shop out of here. Organic now. <laughs> Oh no, beef patty and cocoa bread, universal dialect of your youth, from Chrissy's to Junction, womb to tomb, and no offense to vegetables. You respect theirs and they respect yours, and newcomers know nothing of where they now call home. Wait for the condos and the scatter like roaches when the raid like rent hikes, and there'll be nowhere left in Brooklyn, your birthplace, your only home. How much xenon do their phones ejaculate when they take selfies, and who? Put a uh, Panda Express there. Someone wants you dead, retching the natural colors in your intestines and denial of birthright's a new fad, you know. You, Brooklyn born before the trend and too young to know how blue ruled this place and Ziggy played guitar. And after you stopped singing in your sleep, you woke to find him gone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan E. Franklin. Awesome. Well, you know, I have to say, I really, I feel so 
smug <laughs> and proud of the poets that I get to read for Second Sunday Poetry Series. This has been such a great year. Jordan and Dion, you guys have been fantastic. It's so much fun. Um, the next poet, uh, she's actually, uh, she wasn't able to attend. Um, and so she, she asked me to read for her. She's a deaf poet. Uh, her name is Sage Ravenwood. I do recommend you all look her up on social media. She is a deaf Cherokee woman residing in upstate New York. She's an outspoken advocate against animal cruelty and domestic violence. Her work can be found in Contrary, the Pittsburgh Poetry Journal, Pioneer Town Literary, Grain, The Rumpus, Lit Quarterly, Massachusetts Review, Savant Garde, uh, Anomaly, Mouth, River Mouth Review, and more. So um, she asked me to read for her. Um, so I am going to do that. But what I'm going to do is share a screen of her photo so that you can see her face instead of mine. So you'll associate uh, you know, her at, as opposed to me with her words. So let's see. Her first poem is, so are you, oh, you're probably seeing my, the pages printed of, of her um, poems, aren't you? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see if I can do a split screen so you can see her face. All right. So you can see her, her face now as well as her words. So the first poem is I apologized to the cucumber vine. Snaking further and further into grass, unfurling limbs from a hose down plot of earth, unentangling itself from its dirt mates and stretching toward yard's end. Fleeing the gardener, me, as if I held the pruning shears solely to hamper its rebellious streak. Sorry to the tendril curling indelicate around my heel with its tender shoots for stepping on protruding limbs crawling toward the wild beyond. Inhale the cut grasses warning scent. Beware humans weeding radish friends, yanking stems from their mooring by the roots. Hide under a canopy of wide leaves. Sprawl until creepers touch chicken wire. Climb, trail after sunlight glinting off hexagonal links. Wave to the tomato plants tied to pikes. They're going to turn red soon, flushing angry at harvest time, plucked one by one, whichever is reddest first. String beans hanging around until they snap. Even the potato plants are starting to lean heavy, pregnant with bulging roots. The squash, blooming yellow belly, cowards, I'm sorry is a poor excuse to a sheared cucumber caught slipping under bent chicken wire. Gently lay the twiglet spread eagle in the grass. A sprig wraps around my finger. Forgive me. Sage's next poem is called Way Down. And that's way as in how much something weighs as opposed to the W-A-Y. Everything leads back to this moment. How a flea infested kitten's fur with specks of dark feces feels like a lupine when it's penned inside an overcrowded rabbit hutch. Thanks to mama's unruly fascinating fascination with breeding. Sand chigos flourishing beneath wired cages, bloodthirst biting my arms and legs while I'm standing outside while I'm standing beside an outdoor washing machine, pallet hoisted, spin banging cow shit clothes. I feel scurrying jumpers on my skin, hanging wet laundry. I'm begging for rain to drown the parasites. Sleeping between infested sheets, scratched raw, eyes shut tight when a man strips my body bare. Rubbing alcohol to soothe prickled skin, I share the rabbit's misery. We can't escape way down the darkness you keep. And I'm kitchen step stool step school squatting, a few drops of Dawn dish soap in a bowl of water, flea combing Maine Coon hair, wishing for winter's cold reprieve. Nearby, a bucket, brown infested memory banks.
mutilated bestiary. Barbed, tongue-lashed, offspring, bloodied, sinking, heart, scab, scars, lingua franca, phraseology, tender years, absorption is in the wounding. Bone calcified, mother may I not, stammer under native tongue consternation. Grit embedded, scrape need prayers. Innocence wears thin under the harsh gaze of failure vocabulary. Spite is an unworthy child. Adolescent tongue shamed words are an adult's bully club. Stunning rabbit quick growth into kindness blanched bewilderment. Ache for a child grown large. Adulthood's muted language is an open wound licked raw with a forked tongue. A child sum of scars more in than out. Lips stitched placating vitriolic. Sticks and stones never left pockmarks. Words were always childhood's mutilated bestiary. So the next poem is called Wolf in My Bed. And um, she is really quite the poet of, uh, of animals. So they say you bore three sons. They say you bore three sons. It's called Wolf in My Bed. Hate, treachery, sorrow. Hati, skull, Bjorn Black, as if you fathered human deceit. We place blame, our fallacy on beast. You, giant wolf, tethered, gagged by sword, an oversized pup by all accounts, destined to devour worlds. I'm your godless daughter, living in the bowels of suns unmade, you bringer of darkness laying in my bed, mangy warmth, smelling of dank earth, burial. Tuck me inside your sternum, hand thrust between ribs to touch lungs, inhale, exhale, torment. I'll dance a gig on your tongue, nick a vein, bite down, Fenrir. Does revenge taste so sweet? we would live out of spite. I am your mad dog, silken ribbon deceived, entangle me in the sound of a cat's step. Woman's beard, roots of a mountain, bears sinew, fish breath and bird spittle. They magicked the earth to lay claim. I too wish for darkness. Lay your paw upon my brow, tra claws trailing down, jugular piercing, five delicate fingers stretching up to touch the blind nails of safe. Sing a guttural lullaby, child abandoned, breath deep, dark of sleep, wolf in my head. Our sorrows float rivers through men. Sage's next poem is called The Weight of Hair. Long, down to my waist, ending at the small of my back, dark as a moonless night, moonlit blue. I hated loved those strands framing my jaw, curtains shielding half my body. A shawl draped over my shoulders, burying my face, hiding my pain. My too skinny waist and rib cage. Hair doesn't weigh much at all. I had so much of it in my food, slammed in doors, ropes my little sisters twined their sticky fingers in, pulling themselves upright. My mother forbade me to cut it. Pentecostal or indigenous reasoning, she blurred, the, she blurred the lines so often. When I would braid my hair, a chain traveled the length of my small body. Heat soaked, tying me to a place and time I didn't belong. My hair wore an ageist impression, native born, old religion. Samson to a mother who believed a woman's strength was attracting God-fearing men. Me and the weight of hair, her God cursed me in so many ways. Amen. What more could weigh my shoulders? When saviors are scarce, a child will save itself. 16 is a nexus between woman and child. 
I part my hair in three sections, laced between fingers, memorized dance. Right over middle, left over right, middle over left, one link at a time until my braid chain hangs tight in my shoulder blades. Tie it off so it doesn't unravel like a life. Pick up the scissors, the base of my neck. I tuck my prison between the blades. Cut through until the weight of a mother's expectations slithers to the floor. I leave my braid for my mother, nailed to the door, nailed to the wall, and walk out the door. So I think the last poem we've got time for is called Chainsaw Vibrato. Uh, this is actually one of the first poems that I saw of Sage's. Um, I think I saw it basically through, through Twitter. Um, that's how I find a lot of the poets for a second Sunday. So Chainsaw Vibrato. Sitting cross-legged, sharing a crabapple tree's shade, dew soaks through my jeans. Jade grass caught beneath fingers, waiting for warmth to turn its cloak chartreuse. Morning's unfurled awakening. Grandfather's son is a disco ball dancing between the leaves. I become a leopard of shadows. Daylight knife blades through cloud haze and orange bright eyelids lash fusion. You can't bottle nature's wild. All too soon, a jagged vibrato thrums through the bottom of my feet. The neighborhood chainsaw lover has begun his day. So that is Sage Ravenwood. Um, thank you for letting me share her work with you. Let me see if I can uh, turn off the sharing. Okay. So thank you all so much. I am so happy to see you here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, Jordan, thank you for joining. Dion, thank you for joining. Thank you all for letting me share these poems with, with all of you. Uh, the next second Sunday poetry series date is Sunday, April 10th. I hope to see you all there. And <clears throat> please go out and buy books, buy poetry, buy Jordan E. Franklin's book, buy Dion O'Reilly's book. Have a wonderful uh, rest of March. Thank you very much, all. Take care, and I will see you next week, I hope, or next month. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.